Trigun Stampede is much better than expected. I'll keep it a buck fifty with you. I have not seen the original Trigun, and I originally didn't plan on watching Stampede. Why are you the way that you are? Not that I have any issue with CGI shows. I probably watch more than the average person, but I also don't really seek them out. But perhaps if I realized sooner that this was produced by Studio Orange, I may have watched it. From what I've seen, Stampede is more of a reimagining of the original and not a straight up remake. There's different characters, settings, and an overall pacing. I skimmed through the first episode of the original just to see how reimagined Stampede truly was. I could not even find a similar scene, the only overlap being that Meryl is still a character, but even so, she's an insurance agent in the original and a reporter in Stampede. Knowing that the two adaptations seem to be their own take, I don't have to feel obligated to watch both and compare the two. And like I mentioned, I had no expectations going into Stampede, but... It's honestly just really fucking good. That's good. That's good shit right there. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Yes, the show is CGI, which I can agree can be a bit of a turnoff. However, if you want one company doing a CGI adaptation, it's Orange. They're probably best known for B-Stars, but have also created other incredible CGI-based shows like Land of the Lustrous. Like, just take a look at some of these shots. Even if you absolutely hate CGI, you can't tell me this isn't pretty as shit. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Orange has also managed to do something not a lot of other studios can replicate make CGI actually smooth. I think one of the biggest criticisms with CG is not that it necessarily looks bad, although that's not ideal either, but it often makes for a lot of strange and unnatural looking movement. Take Blue Lock for example, an absolute banger anime with great animation, but their CGI makes characters seem very robotic and stiff. In Trigun Stampede, not only is character movement super fluid, but Orange is able to make use of multiple camera angles and perspectives so that shots never become stale. And can we just talk about the fucking colors, dude? This right here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. I stay awake not sleeping because I'm thinking about this. If you told me I'm gonna watch a show in a desert setting with a sand ocean, I'd be expecting that color palette to look something similar to the map Afghan from Modern Warfare 2. Just a lot of browns and grays, which is accurate for the setting, but just not visually appealing. Firstly, Vash stands out against everything with his blonde spiky hair, bright red jacket, and kinda teal colored arm. I always look back and love this scene with Vash running through the city at Genora Rock. He just stands out so nicely against this rusted background of the city. We have crazy sunset and sunrise shots, beautiful night skies, and even daytime shots feel very lively. There's immense detail put into the environment and landscape, and that helps bring this apocalyptic retro future world to life. I will admit though, it did take an episode or two to fully adjust to the style. The CGI kind of makes this feel more like a Disney Pixar film rather than a traditional anime. Then you mix that with some unique character design like Einstein, Wallace, Ferritor, and a fucking Navi, it just feels different. But honestly, I'm all for that. Too many anime cast generic character 1 through 10 and call it a day, but we have some interesting designs here. But as much as I've praised the CGI, it's not perfect. I notice whenever there's like a sudden quick movement from a character, it feels slower than it should be, and a lot of the time facial expressions aren't accurately conveyed. That might even be just me nitpicking, but I was overall very impressed on the animation. Another thing I was very impressed by was the overall story. The general premise is nothing special. Basically, one side think human bad, want kill, other side think not bad, don't want kill. But how the show handles the personalities of both Vash and Nai is extremely well done. The destruction of their ship lays the framework for how each character feels. Nai is batshit crazy and pretty much wants to kill all humans for the ways that they are using plants, while Vash regrets what he's done and never wants to see another person die. But unfortunately for Vash, he receives an inaccurate reputation from the widespread atrocities committed by his brother, thus earning him the massive bounty on his head and the nickname the Humanoid Typhoon. Now, even though Vash hasn't committed those crimes, I don't think there's a more accurate nickname for him. He's a super kind and peaceful guy, but no matter where he goes, chaos follows. And that's honestly kind of just fucking sad. Are you crying? Am I crying? No, I'm not crying. You're crying. The man can't make any relationships because sooner or later someone is going to come looking for him and destroy everything in their way to do so. But even when that happens, he's still against the violence no matter friend or foe, as we can see with the repeated asking of whose side are you on? Truth is, he isn't on anyone's side, he just wants the outcome with the fewest bodies. 
I'm curious to see if they expand on this theme and if Vash stays strong with his stance. Now admittedly, I did not have this positive outlook on the story over the first couple episodes. In fact, I was considering dropping the show because it seemed a bit too goofy for my liking. <laughs> Man, so bitter. Too much comedic relief, and what would seem like serious moments actually don't feel that serious. In his duel, it just turns to Vosh acting like a baby because he doesn't have any bullets. Or that running scene I mentioned earlier, great colors and camera work, but my guy dodging those bullets like he was in fucking Tom and Jerry or something. Like, any attempt at being serious would just take a quick 180 turn the other way. At the end of the first episode, we get to see the aftermath of the ship crash. Nice hysterical laughter, and finding out that Vosh was his accomplice. I was watching like, oh shit, that's crazy, and then boom, we get a crazy freaking piano solo coming in from this guy dressed like a celestial emissary. Granted that solo was pretty tight and the scene makes sense later on in the show, but there were these little moments that just kind of made me question if I was really enjoying the show. I was hoping that it would get a little darker and more serious somewhat soon, and you know what? They heard me, because as quickly as I was having my doubts, this anime gets dark real fast. Dude, not the piano man again. What's this guy gonna do? Fucking compose him to death? Oh, he composed him to death. I was reading some stuff online saying that Stampede gets dark and serious much faster than the original, which I think is more fitting for the current state of anime. So I'll just say to anyone who's maybe questioning the show, give it at least four to five episodes before you decide if you want to continue. And since we had that tonal shift, the show has just been super solid. We're introduced to new characters, get more backstory on Vash and Nai, and just learn more about this world in general. It sort of feels like us as watchers are also reporters right alongside Meryl and Roberto, following Vash and learning the actual story. And I just gotta mention this one thing. Normally, animes will have some character with some super edgy nickname like Great Explosion Murder God Dynamite just to try and sound cool. In Trigun, when you have someone named Millions Knives, that motherfucker actually got millions of knives. It's a knife. The only thing, or should I say person, that I haven't been a big fan of so far is Meryl. It's the classic naive go-getter attitude that's extremely outplayed where the character keeps wanting to help and puts themselves in harm's way when they know damn well they ain't doing anything. And let me tell you how we got this whole ass ocean desert, incredibly barren at some points, yet she still manages to almost crash into the one singular object that's in front of her in like a 12 square mile radius. However, she's by no means insufferable and does have some decent scenes. And really quickly, I'd like to just shout out the music, not just the opening and ending, even though those are absolute bangers, but every song that they use throughout the show seems perfectly composed for that specific moment. I have no idea how long Stampede will be airing for, the original was 26 episodes, but I think it's safe to say that we'll be getting at least 12. I hope that they continue to produce more episodes or other seasons because this has been my biggest surprise for 2023 anime so far. Have you guys watched Trigon Stampede, the original, or both? Let me know in the comments what you think about the new adaptation and how it holds up against the original. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to support me further, the link to my Patreon is in the description. We have a bunch of tiers and cool rewards like picking stream games, Discord badges, weekly hangouts, early access, and shoutouts at the end of my videos. Like for Killer Bunny, Leon, Little PK, Nova, Peppy Jewel, Nicholas Gutierrez, Tech Rob, Shaky Pants, and Chupa. That's all I got for you this time. Hope to see you here again.